Yeah, tell him. <laughs> Instead of sitting around worrying about your talk. So uh, I'm glad to be up here and join these gentlemen on this panel. Uh, my, my talk, luckily, I, I, I hope fits uh, easily in, in this uh, executive panel as, as well as it might have in the technical panel because I'm not, I'm not going to be very technical in the talk, uh, although as you see from the title, I'm talking about the, the central role of GPS uh, in ubiquitous location. And the reason, uh, when I got invited to, to talk, I was wondering what to talk about, and I decided to give this talk really because I have two teenagers. And uh, by, uh, who, who else has got teenagers? Yeah, just straight. Okay, so quite a lot of you. So you'll understand as I go along uh, why why that is. Okay. Uh, so so be before I, I start talking about GPS, I just wanted to give you a little image of, of what's coming and what we're all involved in. And if you wanted to go find the image of the future, you'd go Google and Google it. Well, Google's actually provided something called Project Glass, which just does that for you. And, and what Project Glass is, is this vision of the future where we'll be wearing something like what she's wearing. It looks like glasses, but actually not glasses if you look up closely. It's just a little heads up display. So that as you walk around the world, uh, you have what would be on your computer screen projected onto reality. So that's what they're calling enhanced reality. And there's a great little video called One Day. Uh, that's, I'm not going to show you that video. I'm going to show you a video, but I'm not going to show you this one. I'll just kind of show you some, so what happens, what uh, proceeds with this video. The guy wakes up in the morning, he looks out the window, his special uh, heads up display shows him what weather to expect. Uh, while he's having breakfast, one of his friends says, meet me in front of Strand Books at two. He goes out the door, he automatically gets uh, a little map in his heads up display to show him how to get there, he gets turn by turn directions as he walks. When he's in the bookstore, he's looking for a particular book. This is a map of the, of, of the aisles of the bookstore and it takes him right to the book he's looking for. Then what, the, the friend who's going to meet him uh, shares his location to let him know he's a, he's a block away. He steps outside, meets his friend. The, the, the video carries on like that. What, what's interesting is, is, is when you go and, and analyze a, a little bit, you, you discover that about 40% of this video is dedicated to navigation. It's not a navigation video. It's not part of this talk. It's really a video about Google's vision of the future of uh, social media and communication and everything. But about 40% of it turns out to be navigation, about 30-something percent dealing with social, socializing, eating, and a few other things like looking out the window at the weather. Uh, so that was kind of interesting. And if you think back, so way back, to like our ancestors first moving along from Africa and within Africa and you know, migrating to Europe and Asia and finally in the Americas, finding your way around was a very big important part and, and, and really technology is kind of caught up that smartphones are sort of have found a, a steady state I think where you're going to see roughly 30, 30, 30 like this uh, what I call finding friending and feeding. That's pretty much all we do. If, if you think about anything you do at any moment of the day, it's centered on, on one of those activities. Under friending, I, I'd, I'd consider unfriending, which like all military activity would fall under that <laughs> category. <laughs> but, but really, we're here to talk about finding. And it's just, it was, I, I was looking at this video for another reason. I was like, wow, so much navigation in there. That's very cool for us. And so it, the video is called One Day. Well, well, when does one day begin? Well, it, it really starts right now. And so now I'm going to show you my own little video. Uh, which, so of, of what kind of thing you, you can do right now uh, with off-the-shelf products. So this is just two minutes. IKEA, Palo Alto. So using a smartphone to navigate smartphone to navigate a car, so that's, that's pretty normal by now. You've seen this, but, but what's coming along really fast is the fact I can get out of the car without doing anything different. Just pick up that thing and start walking inside. I get this map. I know this is working, right? I'm inside this maze of aisles. You are here, wall, wall units and media storage. So there you see the, the old technology and the new technology agreeing with each other. So, so 
I'm trying to get up here, so we'll see if I make it. So down the bottom there is Children's Ikea, so that's my next destination. Okay, so, so one of the things that I thought was kind of cool and worth, sh worth showing you that this very futuristic vision of Google is really available in your hand today, off-the-shelf products. If you've got Android and appropriate hardware in there, you, you can do outdoor to indoor navigation seamlessly already today. The, 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 how well the indoor works depends on which building you're in, but there's, there are some, as I demonstrated right there, that it, where it works very well indeed. So now I wanted to get on to what about the role of GPS and back to uh, my teenage. So in the car, well, of course, you've got GPS there. Now, when I say GPS, I really mean GNSS. And if I was in Europe, I would say GNSS because they get upset if you say GPS. Uh, but so I, I, I mean GPS, blown ass, QZSS, SBAS. Those are all operational now and in the chip in that phone, all of those are being used. Uh, Beidou and Galileo are coming along soon. So that's the QZSS constellation. So in the car, of course, that's what we're using. But not just that, by the way. In smartphones, today we're making use of MEMS, gyros, accelerometers, altimeters. And in uh, any kind of local, lo localization navigation built into the car, you make use of the wheel speed sensors. That's what WESS is, where you have very accurate uh, speed. And in fact, you know if you're going forward or in reverse. So that's driving. What about Wi-Fi? Well, Wi-Fi doesn't use GPS, of course. It's an alternative GPS. Well, what, how does Wi-Fi work? Well, there's Manhattan and a map of uh, where uh, a database thinks all the access points are. So Skyhook does this. Google does this as well. How, how do we do it? They, they have cars like this that, that do a lot of things. The Google cars are most famous for, well, originally intended to uh, set up to, to do photographs. Actually, not so much famous for the photographs now as famous for the data they've been collecting. You've probably heard a lot about it in the news. As they drive around, they're collecting Wi-Fi data. So if you want to know where Google has Wi-Fi data, you just click the little guy on a Google map here, and you just drag him over the map, and they'll show you everywhere that they've, that they've mapped. So it's just kind of interesting. So that's what Manhattan looks like from their point of view, driving around one or more of these cars. So that's nice. And how do they know where the car is as they drive? Oh, well, they've got GPS inside. Uh, then there's other technologies that we use, AFLT, uh, Advanced Forward Link Trilateration, which is basically a, a big acronym for Cellular Time of Flight. That's what we use uh, in CDMA and some uh, implementations of LTE. Uh, so how does that work? You've got your cells, you've got your towers, you walk along there, you measure time of flight from the towers, with CDMA and some LTE, the signals are precisely synchronized, and so you can just get a location from time of flight. So who needs GPS? Oh, how are the signals precisely synchronized? Uh, there's a GPS in every cell tower, you know, of the CDMA cell towers at least, and some of the LTEs. So use GPS to synchronize your signals, and then you can use those signals to locate yourself. So uh, digital TV. Uh, for, it's not so much talked about these days, but it, it, it never goes away as, as a, a, a possible alternative to GPS. And this picture makes the point of why you would want to do it. GPS signal 
probably won't make it through the walls of a big building. A very strong digital TV signal might, and then you could uh, get a signal there, and if you had another signal from another TV tower, uh, you could measure time of flight for those. Now, digital TV towers are not synchronized with each other. No problem, you could synchronize them. Uh, that's actually part of the plan for people who do this. They're gonna put in monitor stations. Monitor station uh, makes a measure of the clock in the uh, digital TV tower, and, and that way provides that information to the mobile device, and it can then do precise time of flight. So how does it make a measure of the clock? Well, with GPS. Okay, IMS we're gonna hear about. Uh, Dinesh will be speaking uh, in the next panel session, and, and this picture is actually uh, from a paper, from, from an article from GPS World uh, by Dinesh and Taramodasan, sitting at the back there. Hi, hello. Uh, IMS may very well be the answer uh, to indoor location in places in the world where it can operate. Uh, I won't go into too much detail because you, you have a speaker here who will be talking about IMS, but uh, IMS, in a way, is like uh, GPS indoors. IMS is, a, is just another member of the branch of the family tree. Uh, SPAS, Bonas, QGSS, Beidou, Galileo, they're all satellite systems copied or similar to GPS. And IMS is very similar to GPS, has the same signal structure, uh, but instead of measuring time of flight, it just tells you where you are in, in the data message. So IMS is a very useful technology. Kind of an alternative to GPS, but not an alternative because it really is a kind of GPS. So just a variation of GPS. Then uh, dead reckoning is an important technology uh, for general location, particularly indoors. Uh, and, and smartphones all have these things in them now. Uh, accelerometers, magnetic compass, and gyroscope. And with, with those things together, you can actually measure your steps as you take your steps. And if you know the direction you're going from a combination of the magnetometer and the gyroscope, well, then you can work out where you are. All you had to have was a good initial position and good initial velocity to calibrate those things. And where are you probably going to get a good initial position and velocity? Oh, GPS. So you'll use GPS to initialize these things, and then they'll work when the GPS is denied or degraded. So, so really when you think about alternatives, if you go look at the, up the word alternative, I just, I spent five minutes doing this and it just it shows up everywhere. I, I, I think this one's particularly funny because that's a panel where, where I'm the uh, track chair for this session at the Institute of Navigation Conference coming up in September. And in my track, I've got urban and indoor navigation alternatives. <laughs> and you know, really, when you think about it, there, there are no alternatives. All of these things are not really alternatives. They all depend on GPS in a way, but they are very fine complements to GPS. No one's pretending that GPS works very well in, in a place like where we are right now. GPS might work in here. It'll probably give you your location out the window. Okay. Uh, so it'll work in a degraded fashion. There's plenty of places where it doesn't work. But what you will use in that case is a, a complement, not really an alternative. And so just to summarize, you've got GPS at the center of all these things. And why did my teenagers make me think about it? Because now that they're teenagers, my son's almost 17, my daughter's 15, they don't really need me anymore. They tell me frequently, yeah, dad, we really don't need you anymore. Oh, can you give us a ride to the mall because we've got to be there and, and my son wants to borrow the car later. And oh, do you have 50 bucks because I'm taking this girl out on a date? So, so that's, that's what it's like to be a teenager. You really don't need your parents, but you need a whole lot of things from them. And, <laughs> and uh, it kind of a little analogy to me of the situation here where we have a lot of different technologies, very useful, but in one way or that another, they, they're all tied back to GPS. Thanks a lot. Thank you.